Welcome to Electra Online. So we do have some calculus videos and in one of those series of calculus videos we have some examples of how to make polar graphs. The equations may look like this and we had some examples and this is just kind of an extraction from the video that says 9 of 38 where we show examples of how to draw polar graphs. But somebody, one of the viewers said, uh, well you always have an integer number in front of the angle. What if you have a non-integer number? Something like that. How do you graph it then? And I thought, well that was a good idea because uh, we didn't have any examples like that. So I thought, let's make a quick video, show you an example of what you would do if it was not an integer number in front of the angle. So in this case it's 0.5 theta. So what we're going to do is set up a table of values. Notice that we're going to pick a number of angles, then we're going to calculate half that number because we have 0.5 theta, then we take the sine of that and then we have to multiply times 2 because we have that constant in front and that will then be the radial value, the distance away from the origin at that particular angle. Now notice if we, I didn't put it down there, but if we have a zero degree angle, that's still zero when we divide it by two, the sine of zero is zero, so that means when the angle is zero, meaning pointing in the x-axis, the, rain, the, the uh, radial distance is zero. So that's where we start. So then the next angle we're going to try is the angle of 60 degrees. Now notice that I've already drawn some circles, one with radius one and one with radius two, because that makes it easier to draw everything. So an angle of 60 degrees is about in this direction right here. So that's about an angle from the x-axis of 60 degrees. So in that direction, what would be the radial distance? And so you can see that you first have to divide by 2, then take the sine of 30 degrees, which is 0.5, and then double it, which is 1. So along that, that, uh, along that radius right there, the distance from the origin would be 1, so we start at 0, and so then you can see that somehow this would look kind of like that. Okay, now we take the second angle at 90 degrees, half of that is 45 degrees, the sine of 45 is 0.707, double that you get 1.414. So when the angle is 90 degrees, that's straight up, the distance is 1.414, which is about here, so then you would connect this line like that. Whoop. I'm making a bit of a mess of it, but okay, that's good enough, like that. All right, so continuing, now let's make the angle 120 degrees, half of that is 60, the sine of 60 is 0.866, double that is about 1.7, so 120 degrees, that would be in this direction, so that's a 120 degree angle from the x-axis, so now we're at a distance of about 1.7, so you can see that the line would continue to about there, so you can see the shape is beginning to form, all right, how about 180 degrees? Now we're in the negative, pointing in the negative x direction. 180, take half of that is 90, the sine of 90 is one, double that is two. So in this direction, we're now at the value of two. So you can see that that line then continues like this. So that's the first 180 degrees. That's the radial distance from the origin outward for those various angles. All right, now jumping to 270 degrees, which is straight down. Uh, half of that is 135, the sine of 135 is 0.707, double that is 1.414, so now we're pointing straight down, we're at 1.4, so you can see that now we seem to be getting the mirror image on the other side, so that looks like this. Now we go to 360 degrees, so it's one complete circle pointing in this direction, half of that is 180 degrees, sine of 180 is zero, so the magnitude then would be zero. So by the time we get back to this, you're back at zero, so then you can see that this is probably going to look like that. All right, so that's all the way up to 360. Now, what happens when you increase the angle to 540, that's 180 degrees more than 360, so now you're pointing back in the negative direction this way, half of that is 270, the sine of 270 is minus 1, double that is minus 2. So when you're pointing in this direction, the radial distance is minus 2 in that direction, which is completely opposite of what we have over here. And then you can probably surmise, and you may want to do this in exercise, that you get the exact same shape, but now pointing in opposite direction. So I would say that it probably is going to look like this. This. And then... Let's see here, make sure I get this right, like this, and like this. So then you'll get the shape in the other direction, the minus values of the initial value. I guess I should make it a little bit taller like that. There we go. 
It'll probably look a little bit more like that. Okay, there we go. And uh, well, try that. So try angles between 360 and 720, and you'll see that you get the exact same shape, but mirror image of that to the other side. And that would then be, of course, the complete representation of the polar graph of that particular function. So now you know, that's how you calculate the numbers necessary to draw a polar graph when the number in front of the angle is not an integer value. And that is how it's done. You think we've done this before? No, I remember doing that in class. Oh, in class, yeah, but I don't think we have it on one of our videos. I remember doing the, and then if you change it, then the, the heart goes up right. Yeah, di different shapes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a typical thing. It's typical, except I didn't, we didn't show any examples of what to do when you have a fraction of an angle or something like that. So. Did you do a spiral then? Because I remember a spiral build. We did quite a few, but it was always energy numbers not a fraction of an angle.